Hi folks, so the questions we have in front of us here today guys are the 2016 short answer questions uh, based off of the section A and the ordinary level paper and uh, as always you have four short answer questions and you have to do three of them uh, each worth a total of 60 marks okay so what we're going to do in the video today is we're going to work through all four of them individually starting off with this one up here A1 and finishing down here on this one on the bottom right A4 uh, so I'm going to zoom in on that one there now all right so for question A1, it says the graphic below shows the Irish Credit Union logo, okay, something we're all probably familiar with. It consists of two ellipses which share the same minor axis, okay. So uh, it also says the drawing on the right shows the complete inner ellipse. So you can see here, obviously, we've got two ellipses, uh, one on the inside, one on the outside, obviously a further elong or more elongated one on the outside and the inside one as well and what they're saying is that they share the same minor axis okay or in this case the sa same minor circle uh, part a locate the additional points on the curve and draw the second ellipse so we have to get the more elongated one and then locate the focal points of the second ellipse okay so this is relating back to junus or tech drawing here whereby what we're going to do is concentric circles method we're going to split our circles our major and minor circle up into 30 60 degrees so 30 degrees that way, 30 degrees this way, 60, <clears throat> and finally 60. Now, what I should note is, and I usually did this for Junior Star Tech John, I'll always note the direction of my major axis, so usually I just write MAJ. And in this case, my major is going from left to right. And I could also write in my minor, which is this axis, okay, which is going vertical, up and down. Okay, so the minor is going vertically up and down, the major is going horizontally from left to right. And always the extents of your major is a point there and a point there, and the extents of your minor is a point there and a point there. And what we have to do is we have to find the other points. So, the method is where it hits the major axis, or sorry, where our lines are cut lines, so in this case you can see here, uh, this green line here, where the green line, if you follow it out, where it hits the major circle, we're going to go parallel to the minor axis. So where it hits the major circle, which is this guy here, major circle, okay, where it hits the major circle, a little arrow there, where it is the major circle, I go parallel to the minor axis, which is going up and down. So that means where it is the major circle, I'm going to go down here, okay? On this side, I would actually go up. Okay. Likewise, using the same line, where it hits the minor circle, I'm going to go parallel to the major axis. So where it hits the minor circle, the major axis is going left and right. In this case, I'm going to go right. Whereas on the bottom half of the ellipse, I'm also going to go right. That will help identify a point for me there. So we just apply that method to all of these kind of lines here. These lines basically that I often describe as are like the clock faces, okay, or the clock numbers 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, obviously 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, back to 12, okay? So in the case of number 1, okay, where it hits the major circle, I'm going to go parallel to the minor axis. So in this case, I'm going to go down. In this case, here, I'm going to go up. Likewise then, where it hits the minor circle, on this side I'm going to go right. There we go. That will identify two further points for me. I've already got a point here. Now we're going to work on this half of the ellipse. So, where it hits my, ma where it hits my major circle, I'm going to extend vertically down, and on this half, up. And do the same here, just have it done, where it hits the major circle, and extend down, and extend up, and then where it hits my minor circle, horizontally across, horizontally across, parallel to the major axis. Just extend up and down a little bit further. And there we have located our points on our ellipse, okay, just going over them there, and what I'm going to do now is sketch in the curve. So 
So there we have it. That there is the second ellipse completed. And now for the second part of the question, what we have to do is locate the focal points of the second ellipse. So I'm going to take that one there. And what we are doing by finding the focal points is the method for that is what we're going to do is we're going to take half of our major axis. So from the center of a major and minor circle, so half the major axis, which is here, and I'm going to go either to the top of the minor or bottom of the minor. So in this case, I'm going to go to the top of the minor. So in arc, let's go to the major axis. And likewise, on the opposite side, I could also just show you here, go to the bottom of the minor, and it should give me the exact same points. Okay, just showing you that they both work. And that there is F1 and F2. And there we have our focal points of the second ellipse found. Okay, so that there is question A1 done, guys. What we're going to do, move on to now, is question A2, which is a perspective question at the bottom page. All right. So for question A2, it says the 3D graphic below shows a set of goalposts similar to those used in the UEFA Championship. The drawing on the right shows the plan and partially completed perspective view of the goalposts. Uh, complete the perspective drawing of the goalposts. So we've got the plan view of it here. We kind of have a realistic uh, pictorial view of it here of the goalposts and then a partially completed perspective here where we're given our pitch plane, our horizon line with our vanishing points, vanishing point two and one, and then our ground line as well, okay? And as we can see, uh, we've already kind of got the front section of the goalposts and the back section completed here. So we need to basically complete the back section of this kind of side of it here, okay? Um, so what we need to note is anytime we're doing a perspective, what you're going to do is you're going to use the vanishing points in the direction of the edges of our goalposts. So let's take, say, the crossbar here, which is this section here. All right. If I was to label the crossbar, just come over here to my drawing, I was called that point A and point B. Well, technically, this is point A and point B is right here. OK. And the back section, if I was to call that maybe C there and D. So you can see it kind of makes a rectangle A, B, C and D. OK. Uh, technically then that would be C there and D there and then this bit here and this bit here is where it goes down to the ground okay uh, so technically we've already got A or sorry A is here I should say B is there and technically D is back here now we want to find C now the faces from let's say A to B all right that's going in this direction and if you look at our spectator here from that direction parallel to that face, hits the pitch plane here, extended down, gives us our VP1. So any edges, A to B, D to C, and whatever this one is here at the back, any of those three edges there, every one of them will vanish to VP1. Whereas from B to C, or A to D, they're going in this direction. So they will vanish to VP2. Therefore, if I want to find from B to C, I have to go to VP2 from B. And somewhere out along that vanishing line will be my point C. To locate point C, it's a case of project C down to your spectator, where it hits the picture plane, extend it down perpendicular to the picture plane. So, a bit of sliding sets words here. Extend that down. That will help me locate point C. And now, if I want to find the back stanchion, which is this point down here, which is this point here in my plan, what I want to do is the exact same method. Extend that down to my spectator. I usually stop it at the pitch plane. You can see here they brought it all the way in. I just stop at the pitch plane because I think it's neater. Once again, a bit of sliding set squares. Extend that down. And luckily for us, because that point there is on the ground, I know this is extending out to meet it. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is heavy in this section here. And then connect this point to here. Now, if I am accurate, really this should vanish through because that back edge there, sorry, from D to C. Okay, because I have D, and I also now have C, which is there they should extend on and it should meet it 
I can see that's actually good. Happy with that. Now I can heavy in that back section there as well. Okay, and I've kind of got that back stanchion now as well. And as we can also see, make sure I get it completely done. This would extend out here as well. And there's also a stanchion in there, as we can see down along here. Okay, so on that question, not too difficult. It was simply a case of obviously just kind of following the method and making sure you weren't missing out on any lines. Uh, like this one here would have been a very easy one. You might have thought when you had the side done and maybe the top done that you were finished, you might have missed out on that. Okay, so that's question A2 done, guys. What we're going to move on to now is question A3 on the top right of the page. All right. So for question A3, it says the 3D graphic of gym equipment below shows a hemisphere A, okay, so we've got a hemisphere A, and a truncated cone B in mutual, in mutual contact, so we've kind of got the truncated cone where it's been cut off at the top, and then a sphere C, or sphere C is also shown in contact with the hemisphere, all three rest on the floor. And we can see then that uh, hemisphere A and the truncated cone B are in contact right on their edges, okay, so they're actually touching almost on their extreme generators of the cone, excuse me, and the extreme arc of the hemisphere, so they'll actually be touching right here is where they're going to be touching, whereas for sphere C, it's slightly in the front, you can see they left this little kind of section here incomplete on the hemisphere, because sphere C is going to be kind of overlapping that, okay, and you can see here it's slightly in front of the hemisphere. So that's what we're going to have to do. It says, the drawing on the right shows the elevation and partially completed plan of the gym equipment. Part A, draw the plan of the truncated cone. And then part B, draw the plan of the sphere. Okay, so this is kind of based on your understand, understanding of uh, solids in contact and orthographic. So we're going to start with part A there. And we have to draw the plan of the truncated cone B. So. I project down the center because as I look down on top of the cone, when I'm looking down on top of it, anytime you look down on top of the cone, you're going to see a circle. And obviously, the cone has a base here uh, where the radius is from here to here. So that's what the shape we're going to see. It's a circle. But because it's truncated, there's also another circle on top of it that has a radius from here out to here. So I'm going to project those down as well. Uh, starting off, though, I know my point of contact is meeting right here. So that's my point of contact there and what I'm going to do now is draw in that cone in my plan view. I should say truncated cone. So by taking the radius, didn't even need to take the radius, could just done it from here. So protect it down the center. Just do this without slipping. I am using a pen. So there is the um, where the base of the cone is obviously sitting on the horizontal plane of the ground. But I also have, I also have a, sorry there, I also have the radius as well here. Okay, so if I just extend that down and hopefully my boy will just about reach it. Yeah, trying to keep it as neat and tidy as possible. It's just about staying within. And there we have it. Okay, that there is obviously where the cone has been cut off at the top. And if I was to extend that down there. We can see that they meet up as well. Okay, so that is where uh, part A is completed. So just heavy that, or sorry, take that off. Now we're on to part B. Draw the plan of sphere C. So first of all, any time you have um, a sphere or a cylinder or something in contact, and it's in front in your elevation, okay, so we can see it's slightly angled. Obviously, it's not right on the edge. What we're going to do is we're going to have to um, we're going to have to obviously locate sphere C in a position when it is touching on the extreme R or on the stream X X circumference of hemisphere A. So what we're going to do is I'm going to extend out that there and somewhere down along here, I'm just going to mark in that center down, somewhere down along there is going to be the center point of sphere C. 
However, what I need to do is I need to find the exact position of where it is down there. So the best way to do that is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the radius. Okay. I'm going to take the radius of uh, sphere C. I'm going to take that radius there. And where it is touching, where it's hemisphere A, because that's technically the center line of my sphere, or my hemisphere, where that is, I'm going to actually just mark it out here on the XY line. And then, what I'm actually going to do is, <coughs> I'm going to rotate that, like that, up. Okay? So what I did was, I took the radius of sphere C, and from the edge of my hemisphere, I marked it out and then I rotated it up. So if you think of it, basically I've moved it to the side and I've rotated it up, and that is the new position of a ghost sphere C, okay, in its correct position. Now, what I could do, just to show you that ghost sphere, I could take that radius, draw it in. So what I've essentially done here is I've drawn in the exact same sphere, sphere C, and it's like it's been rotated about A until it's touching on the extreme generator. And where they're touching is technically where I would join the centers, like that. And that point in there would be known as a point of contact, right there. Okay, probably should have used a red pen, so with that, apologies. That would have been a point of contact. Now. Where I have found that, that is technically out along this axis line here. So I'm going to extend that down. Didn't actually have to draw it in, it was all just about finding the center. And where I've extended that down, what I can do now is, I can rotate that center about until it's in its correct position. And as we know, it's somewhere along, along this line. Now that I've found the exact center of it, what I can do is I can actually draw in that sphere. <clears throat> so, take the radius of that. So it's this guy. Draw it in my plan view. So there's sphere C, draw, or sphere C drawn in my plan view. Complete the plan of my hemisphere. And because it's overlapping, technically, these little bits inside in here. Are hidden detail. Okay, so that was truncated cone B. This is sphere C, and they haven't asked us. We've drawn the plan now, we have it done, but they haven't asked us for the points of contact. But I always like to show the points of contact if I can. Uh, we know we have one here where the truncated cone meets the hemisphere, so I'll usually say POC there, which would be down here, point of contact where they're meeting right here. We've located where the point of contact is, and that's why we got this ghost sphere. The ghost sphere is very, very helpful because it helps locate the point of contact, okay, and, and the height it's at. So that point of contact is right there. But remember, that isn't the one we exactly want, it's just showing us the height of it. But that is when we have the ghost sphere C around the outside here. I was actually to draw that in, hopefully to explain it a little bit better. I'll draw that in once again, just in my plan view. So take that radius, remember this is the position of it when it was on the extreme generator. Now, essentially what has happened here, just to show you is, this ghost sphere here, in my plan view, that's where it is here. And essentially what's after happening is, I initially, at the very very start, rotated it from this position back to here. And then to find it in my plan, rotated it down. That's really what I actually did. But essentially, I found it up here on the extreme generator, projected it down, and then rotated by rotating around A, because that's the object it's moving around, the hemisphere A, and I rotated the center point of the ghost sphere until it was in its correct position, right here. So I can do the exact same with the point of contact. So the point of contact, bring it down, that point of contact is right here. So we know that's not the correct position because that's where the ghost sphere is and the point of contact on the ghost sphere. So if I rotate that around, my point of contact has to be in somewhere along that arc 
How do I finish it and find it exactly? Join the center of the hemisphere A and the center of sphere B, or sphere C, I should say. And to locate it, it exactly, there it is, right there. So that's POC. And then to find it in my elevation, checked it up. We know the height of it. So that would stay at the same height as it rotates around the object or around the hemisphere. So there we have POC in elevation as well. Okay, so point of contact between the hemisphere and the sphere C, both in elevation plan and also between the hemisphere and the truncated cone B as well in both elevation and plan. Okay, solids in contact, understanding vortigraph projection and solids and how they move about one another. Um, very nice question, okay. Hardest part of that one was uh, hemisphere A and the sphere C, okay. I uh, hope found that helpful, guys. What we're going to move on to now is the last question on this, and it is question A4 at the bottom page, okay. So this question here, folks, it says question A4, the image below shows a house with a solar panel located on its roof. The plan the partially completed elevation and partially completed end view of the house and solar panel are also shown. And it says part A, complete the elevation of the house and the solar panel. Part B, complete the end view. Okay, so for part A guys, it's saying complete the elevation. So we can see our plan view here. And we can see that the house in relation to the vertical plane is actually at an angle in, re in relation to the vertical plane. Okay, that angle in there. So it's kind of uh, twisted to a certain extent and we have the elevation up here and it has not been completed so first of all what we have to do is complete the elevation of the house so uh, just in relation to obviously the side of the house we can see that this section here is the side of the house uh, where this is the height of the wall okay and this would be the height so i'd imagine then that point there should connect up here as well and give us the pitch of the roof kind of likewise is what we had here at the back of it okay and what we have to do now is we have to complete the elevation so the solar panel is in this position here they've kind of given us the starting point which is very helpful so that top point there okay if i was to label the solar panel and just going to get a different marker here a second something a little bit neater just for labeling purposes I'm going to go over the green so if i was to label this point A and then B to C and to D okay I want to locate those so we can see A is up here B is down at this height okay so I can see that B and C okay because they're parallel okay uh, kind of with this edge here they're going to be at the same height as is A and D so D has to be somewhere up along the same height as A likewise with C has to be along the same height as B so to find those it's simply a case of projecting up to your elevation d is in this position project that up same with c and <coughs> it's a case then of just projecting across and locating those points so c is going to be right here then d is going to be right there and I know they can connect up then. So, just to heavy that in. That one. And then, connect them together like that. So there we have our solar panel um, fitted in on our elevation. Just making sure now that that is everything I think I have to do. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to draw our end view, okay, in this position here. So technically what we're drawing here is when we're looking at the house kind of from this side over here. Um, so we're going to see when we're looking if you had a person kind of, let's say, a person standing here. And you can kind of see that there where his shoulder is here, shoulder there, and they're looking in this direction at the house, okay, of the arrow. And essentially, what they're going to see is they'll see all of this bit here, okay? And they won't see the back of the roof, but they will see all this face, and they'll see this face as well at a slight, a skewed angle. So what we have to do is we have to project those across. Um, so I'm going to start off by doing this face here, and it'll probably come into kind of view there in a second. 
so you can see here they've already extended this one up we've already got the height of it so to find this bit I'm going to bring this across and then where it hits here the method I usually use is a 45 degree line but this also works by rotating about rotate that up as far as the XY line to transfer my width project that up that has been projected up it's going to be the same height here so at that point right there I can actually heavy that now down to here and maybe in this section as well and I also know then that I can see this edge all along here as well so there's that edge done and I don't see this one at the back which is technically going from here all the way to here if I was to bring that across but I don't need to but what I will need to do is put in hidden detail so it's kind of like this guy here okay um, what I will have to do is bring that across though and I'll tell you why in a second because that will show me where the back edge is there so using where the corner is and at that point right there that will help determine for me my edge at the back as it goes down and from this point right here there we have that okay so that's that kind of back face there okay as we see it now what I have to do is I have to locate A, B, C and D again so A has been brought across for us you can see we found A already so A has come across rotate around is up to here so there's A now we want to find B, C and D so for B it across so there's D and C and every one of them I'm just going to rotate up into position So, having rotated those into position, uh, I've already got A, A connects to D, so I'll just find D first. D is going to go up to there, just to have found that. Um, next one I need to find is B. So it's going to go across there, and if I project across B and C from this view, they'll be there. And finally, C is going to go up as far as here so let's just label those so B followed up same height so there's B there C is going to be over here and finally D it's just a case then of drawing in the detail maybe that edge down there and likewise with this edge here and there we have it essentially what we have on this one here is kind of basically looks like this one has been kind of flipped over it almost looks like the mirror image when it's been kind of copied over okay and that is all to do with obviously we were looking in in this direction of the pen and we can see that the house was obviously inclined uh, to the vertical plane okay or was that an angle to the vertical plane um, there we have it guys that is question four done completed the end view uh, that's all four questions guys from that exam paper hope you found it helpful that's them done okay